will be attendance this afternoon and with the with the coverage of those who are attending no? Parang all the sectors are represented today so I mean on that basis alone hindi natin nasabing successful na agad yung ating BCM din mapalapakan natin ang ating mga sabi okay. now just to before I introduce ang ating guest lecturer this afternoon and we are humbled uh, by his presence no? this is uh, part of our duty to ensure the public that we will be having a credible election ngayong 2022 in spite of all the criticisms from against the gov government uh, Commonwealth attempts to discredit the the uh, accuracy of our vote counting machine gusto po namin siguro po sa inyo na yung voto po ng lahat na pupunta sa araw na alalan ay bibilangin at bibilangin ng tama ay napapaasa po tayo na wala pong gayaang magaganap at least from the level of the machine at bibilangin po niya ng tama sa part ang inyong mga boto at hindi namin naayaan ay yung isang boto masasaya okay? with that being said gusto ko pong ipakilala ang ating guest speaker uh, guest lecturer this afternoon when I joined the Commission of Elections 2010 ako ay galing sa private no? wala akong masyadong alam sa election private practice ako he is one of those who really mentored me. That was the first, very first automated election, no? So, siguro sa malalaman nyo na ngayon agad kung yung edad niya. Hero lang po. But he was uh, the one who mentored me during that time and until this very time na naging assistant regional director po siya. Um, with his guidance, marami po akong strategic na tutunan. And of course, we are, as I said, no, humble tayo na is, uh, this event is being raised by his presence. At least, galing sa director, malalaman natin, diretsyo, itong tungkol sa makin ito at kung paano tatapo itong makin ito. Without uh, further ado, palapakan po natin ang ating guest lecturer, Attorney Hovencio Balak. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Did you get a little bit mask? Okay. So, thank you, Attorney Eli. And thank you for uh, hosting this uh, afternoon's BCM Roadshow. Uh, this is one of the series of roadshows that we conduct not only in NCR, but for our jurisdiction in NCR. This is the fourth minute of our series of BCM Roadshow. So I am happy with uh, the presence of uh, various sectors, including candidates and uh, our vulnerable sectors voters. No? This is actually this is not really for all the voters. No? The BCM Road Show is an introduction once again to you of the machine that we will use in the 2022 elections. No, so uh, I know very well that most of us here have experienced voting. Uh, anyone na, na naka-experience na ng voting using the BCM? Lahat? Ah, halos lahat. No? So, yung mga baguhan, uh, ngayon yung makikita dito yung BCM natin. Alright. Uh, this will be a two-part uh, program. The first part will just be the introduction, a little of the lecture coming from me, and the rest will be an actual demonstration of uh, the BCM and actual hands on by everyone. So, not kayo, I pwedeng uh, mag try bumoto by using the ballots. So, we have BCM, we have roadshow ballots that we'll be distributing around. Then you can shake the ballots. Then you can experience by yourself how to feed the ballot into the BCM. Ngayon, makikita niyo dito kung tapa pa siya magpila. Okay? Paglagay kayo ng isang photo, Halimbawa, for mayor, kung tama ka yung bilang niya. Bakit? Kasi may lalabas na isipo, di ba? Meron tayong BVPAC or Voter Verifiable Voter Audit Paper Trail. Ganito, no? Paglabas ng, pagpasok ng BCM ng inyong balota, may lalabas na isipo confirming or uh, indicating the list of candidates that you voted. No? Kaya, tingnan nyo ngayon. 
Subukan nyo yung mag-overvote. Kung talagang tama siya. No? Ano ba yung overvoting? Kung sumobra kayo sa boto ng kandidato na dapat i-boto for a particular position. May ba? Dalawang minoto yun. Dapat isa lang, di ba? Dapat paglabas, paglabas ng resibo, dapat zero. Okay? Tapos, uh, subukan nyo sirain yung at saka yung i-connect yung mga timing marks kung babasahin pa siya. No? Kasi, as a rule, hindi dapat, hindi dapat natin sirain. No? Pero, halimbawa, just for curiosity, meron mga timing, mark, timing marks sa gilid na pag nag-connect yan, hindi na siya, hindi na siya makainin yung machine. Okay? So, those are the things that you can experience today. Uh, as a refresher for those of you who have already experienced voting using the DCM. Alright, 2022 elections is the team automated election. Okay? From now, uh, from today, we have uh, we have 32, 32 days. I think 32 days from now is election day. Okay? And we will be using an automated election system, particularly optimal mark reader system of the automated elections. No? Uh, so this afternoon, I have with me uh, the actual BCM, tatong BCM na nandito later on. Uh, kayo mismo magkikip, kayo mismo ang talagay ng mga balota, kayo mismo magkishape. So using the marking pen, nadaladala namin dito. Alright? So you will experience the, the same experience that you have in the previous elections. Okay? So three topics. Pero dalawang, so pagkatapos po, we will have the hands-on uh, hands-on on the voting process. So this morning, uh, this afternoon rather, we will just have to discuss three topics. First is about the DCM, second is about the ballot, and third is about the voting. No? So, tatlo lang. Okay? The DCM, the ballot, and how? How to vote? Okay, uh, just a refresher, so EXL code because I want a longer part for you in the actual or the hands on. Alright, so 32 days from the May 9, 2022 elections. So, konti na lang yan, but at this early, we are doing the roadshow so that the voters will be informed about the process and the uh, of how to vote using the automated uh, counting machine. Again, the 2000, in 2016, we used the BCM. Okay? In 2019, for the second time, we used the BCM. Okay? And this is the third time that we will use the same machine. So in 2022, we will use the same machine that we used in 2016, 19. But we refurbished the machine. Okay? In Aritania, so that it will function as new. So, the 97,000 machines, meron ng konting, meron hindi na gagana. So, nabawasan ng konti, but we list about 10,000 machines. So, uh, 100,000 plus. So, about 105, uh, 106,000 machines that will be used in the 2022 elections. Meron kasi eksaktong machines na gagamitin sa polling centers and there will be contingency machines in case of malfunctions. Okay? Automated election system, so dying automated. The way how voter express his will is by way of shading the oval beside the name of the candidate. So unlike the manual election, so that pa pa But in an automated election, look at what we use in an automated election. There is the machine, and uh, you are provided with a ballot with all the candidates' name and parties written already, then beside them are the OVAS opposite the name or the party. Okay? And we have the 10 and uh, we give you an instructions on how to indicate the vote. Okay? Dito pang machine kasi, kailangan niya ng ink. Kailangan niya ng mark so that he would recognize kung sino ang gusto niyong i-vote. So it's therefore important to review uh, how the machine should work and how the votes should be counted or could be counted by way of your shape. So, we have a threshold requirement to later on. 
Uh, ano ba mag, paano mo masabi kay machine na siya ang gusto mong iboto? That's my way of shading the oval beside the name of the candidate. So, later on, actual, hindi nyo makikita. So, that's an automated election system that we will use in the 2022 elections. This is the fifth automated election no, that we have in the country. No, 2010, 2013, in 2010 and 2013, we use ECOS. Kung naalala nyo, ECOS ang tawa. But the same system, no? optical mark reader system. It's a counting machine using a paper. Sa iba naman yung direct recording electronic, nawala na siyang uh, paper. No? Meron electronic ballot. So we are using in the company, optical mark reader system. Okay? So, dito, may kita mo yung, uh, in order for you to register your vote, you need to shave. So, pag hindi ka nag-shave, ano yung sabihin ni Masin? Ay, hindi siya bumaboto for that particular position. So, abstention. Pwede ba mag-abstain? Pwede. Pwede mag-abstain. Ayaw mo bumaboto dahil ang mayor, kapareho mong kamag-anak, kapareho mong kumari, pwede ka mag-abstain by not shaving. So, yung how to register your vote is simply by shaving. Alam ka natin yun. Diretso na tayo for this uh, morning. What are, what's new in the coming elections? No? Uh, except for some, halos yun din naman yung, in the previous elections. But in these elections kasi there is a there is an incorporation of minimum health standards. Kaya yun yung pagbabago. Meron face mask, meron uh, is, meron tayong mga thermal scanner, meron tayong mga physical distancing. No? But uh, most of the procedures are the same. Okay? So, di ba pwede bumoto yung 37.5 degrees? Degrees ba? Uh, ang kanyang temperature? Di ba pwede? Pwede. Because in the 2022 elections, we have introduced IPP. IPP. Isolation polling place. So, meron siyang area, doon siya bumoto kung talagang hindi siya bumababa sa 37.5 degrees pagpasok niya sa ating area. Alright. So, not so much about the, the changes in the 2022. Pero tandaan nyo, ang plan na kada isang clustered proceed for the 2022 elections ay meron not less than 800 registered voters. It used to be 1,000 registered voters for every clustered proceed or for every machine. Pero this time, we will have 800 registered voters per cluster precincts or per machine or per BCM. Okay? Then there will be some changes like there will be COVID marshal inside the voting center. Kasi nga, we are we are under a pandemic election scenario. So yun lang yung mga halos pagbabago. Pero almost the same yung process of uh, voting in the voting centers. Alright. Voting center, matatanggal nyo, ganyan ang scenario. Uh, the voting should always be on a first-come, first-come basis, pero medyo, medyo mahitip ngayon in so far as the physical distancing is concerned. Alright, just to give you a statistics, in NCR, we have 7,322,361 registered voters. No? Uh, that's higher of 257,758 in 2019 elections. So that's about 3.5% increase. Well, tingnan nyo dito sa inyo sa South, uh, 2,172,475. So, tayo pa rin ang pinakamataas kasi nga marami kayo masyado. Uh, marami cities dito, no? from Pateros, Makati, Pasay, Paranaque, Las Piñas, uh, Mundilupa, and uh, Pas uh, Pasay, ano ba? Uh, Pateros. So, these are the cities. Dito na pala ang election officer ng uh, Pasay, si Atty. Uh, Santiago. Palagpakan natin, dahil <coughs> saya sa ating mga lecturers and you. Alright. So, that's the statistics just for everyone's uh, information. And those are the specifics. This is the, these are the registered voters of the cities under the, uh, under the south district. No? Uh, Las Piñas is there. Tama ba? Uh, Makati, uh, kasama ng Makati natin dito. Then, uh, Las Piñas is 291,074 uh, registered voters. And you have 30 voting centers. 
and the total number of class that received is 404. Ibig sabihin, 404 din ang inyong DCM. Plus, yung contingency DCM that we'll be using. Alright. So, let's go to the presentation. DCM is the full counting machine. No? That is the cost. The cost that is the machine count optical scan. This time, we use the DCM. DCM is itong nasa harapan ninyo. Okay? This is the refurbished DCM. By the way, yung ating mga balota na gagamitin din for today, mayroon ng mga lanes and candidates. Pero, these are not the real candidates. No? Yung mga nandito, mga fictitious lang yung mga names. No? Kasi, hindi natin pwedeng ilagay dito yung mga tunay na kandidato. At pantang lang natin, after the after this uh, hands-on or demonstration, pakibalik lang po yung balota. Kahit hindi po tunay yan, hindi pwedeng nasa inyong possession yan. Lahat ang makita nyo dito, pati yung mga resibo na mga lalabas from the machine after you hold it, pakibalik lang po. Dapat walang lumabas na mga ganito. Bakit? Pag nakagawa sa kayo nito, kahit hindi totoo ito, pwede tayo makabala. No? Itong balota na ito, sa tingin nyo, pag nakita sa kotse nyo, kandidato kayo, kahit hindi totoo yan, pwede kayong ma makanong, no? kabala na yun. So please, after the voting, after this activity, pakibalik lang ito rito. Alright. BCM is the... Alright. That's the BCM. And uh, again, this is an optical mark scan or mark scanner or mark mark reader system. Okay? Tapos saan, meron tayong balota, pinapasok siya dito. Pagpasok dito sa slot, uh, i-interpret niya, i-record niya ang image ng ballots, both sides. Remember, ng balota ay dalawang sides. Okay? So, this is the optical mark reader system ng automated elections. Uh, there are other uh, parts of the reference of the machine. No, meron siyang SD card, meron siyang uh, eye bottom, then meron siyang mga uh, may thermal scanner, may thermal paper. So, later on, makikita nyo naman lahat when you personal experience voting. Okay? Just to give you a background, ito yung mga parts of BCM. You have the LCD, yung pa rin, makikita nyo, after the voting, you will see na meron nakalagay na congratulations, tapos ka na, Janine, na cast na yung vote nyo. There is the ballot, there is the cast button, and there is the uh, return button, and there is the ballot entry slot. Ito yung ballot entry slot dito sa harapan mismo. The ballot can be inserted in four orientations. Apat orientations, no? Pwede siyang top, front, tapos uh, back, pwede rin sa likod. So, in all of the order rotations, papasok si Balota dyan. Ano lang hindi siya pwede pumasok kapag nakagalon? Siya pwede siya papasok dahil maliit lang yung entry slot. Alright. So, BCM. Uh, we have three BCM this afternoon. And, uh, okay. Diretso na tayo. This is the ballot box. This is the same ballot box. This is the same appearance of the ballot box that we will use for 2022 elections. Okay? Pero lang pagkakaiba ng kanyang uh, logo, yung same elections ang pagkakaiba ng kanyang logo, yung same elections ang pagkakaiba ng kanyang But this is the same ballot box that will be used and where these BCMs will be mounted. Okay. So, that's the same appearance of uh, the, the box of the BCM. No? So, kung doon sa mga watchers na po yung gusto mong tumingin during the distribution, kung matikita nyo, Ganyan po yung sura ng uh, uh, Alright, sige. Uh, medyo tumatalon yung ating Alright, that's back up battery that uh, is uh, accompanied by every DCM. Kahit meron power interruption, tuloy lang kasi yung battery naman can uh, last for 15 hours. Okay? So, let's go to the ballot. Alright. So, the ballot is less than uh, less than 30 inches. No? Uh, the front page of the ballot is the uh, candidates or the list of candidates or the names of the candidates for national position. No? Uh, president, vice president, senators, then governor, vice governor, board member, congressman, mayor, vice mayor, up to uh, city councilors. Sa likod, party list. Okay? Sa lahat ng party list, nasa likod na. Pero, lahat ng part 
Papilis, hindi na siya naka-alphabetical okay? order dito. Because ang kanilang order is uh, draw lots na. So, yun yung mapapansin ngayon na yung mga new registration ng mga Papilis ay hindi na rin na gumagamit sobra ng letter A. Diba? Ang mga Papilis dati, A, A, A. A, A, A. Meron pa mga one. Pag nag-one ka, nasa harapan ka talaga sa computer. Kaya meron one putak na meron. This time, it's become irrelevant kasi ang paglagay ng kanilang list dito sa likod ay draw lots. Kaya mapapansin nyo, dapat sa kanilang uh, campaign, number talaga kasi hirap hanapin dito. Dahil hindi alphabetical yung mga party list na nandito. Okay? Sa dami nila, isa lang yung boboto na party list. Okay? So, official ballot natin is, again, is less than 20, uh, 30 inches. So, yan yung malota for an automated election. Nagkakaiba yung basya ng entry depending on the jurisdiction. So, kung ano yung pasa, isa pa iba yung mayor na nakalagay dyan. Tapos yung, uh, kung dalawang distrito, siyempre mag-iiba dyan yung mga candidates for counselors. Okay? Dito sa atin sa NCR, siyempre, Oh, wala din yung Governor, Vice Governor, and Board Members kasi wala sa atin dito. Okay? So, nag-iiba-iba yung balota every jurisdiction. Pero sa likod, pare-pareho yan kasi party list yan. At saka dito sa taas, pare-pareho yan kasi President, Vice President, Senators. Nag-iiba-iba lang kami ng balota kada city na Mayor, Congressman, Vice Mayor, and member of sa kanyang panlusot or pambayan in the case of Ateros. Okay. So, the follow uh, Let me give you some further information about the follow Yung follow natin, meron siyang QR code. Okay. Meron siyang NPO security. Meron siyang trusted receipt numbers na nandito. Okay. Ito po yung trusted receipt numbers niya. So, ang isang cluster precinct, again, ay binubuo ng mga individual precinct na ang total number of registered voters is not more than 800. So, mapapakikita niyo dyan ang mga individual precinct. So, ang bawa, 0018, 001B, 0028. Yan yung mga individual or established precinct na ang total number of registered voters in one individual precinct is not more than 200, basta ang total niya will not exceed 800. So, nandito yan. So, ang mga balota may ganyan. So, there's no way na itong balota nito ay magamit sa ibang machine kasi naka-configure yan sa isang specific DCM na andoon sa SD card. Okay? Sa so, mga tuwid, kung isang balota sa cluster precinct A, a uh, 1, ay eh, ginamit po sa cluster precinct 2, hindi siya marerecognize at hindi siya at i-reject lang siya ng machine. Nandito yung paraan ng pag-photo at nandito yung specific territorial uh, territorial link, no? Nakalagay na yung mawa, Las Pinas National Capital Region. Okay? So, NPO security. So, this is the appearance of a ball of including security features. Alright. Ito yung timing marks na sinasabi ko dito sa gilid ng balota. So, you'll notice, meron tayo ng mga uh, rectangular marks dito sa gilid. And those are the same uh, spaces na kung saan dapat nakatap nakatapat ang isang oval. So, kung yung mga naririnig sa mga balita na meron tayong mga ino-observe pa ng balota kasi minsan hindi tama yung pagkaka- print, hindi tukma, no? Kaya nakakatabini, hindi pwede yun. Otherwise, hindi pa papasa yung specific candidate na kung saan gusto mong piboto. Okay? So, that's the from of the ballot. Meron, yun na nga, the local positions, including the national, president, vice president, senator. Meron yung party list po nasa report. Okay? So, what's more about the ballot? Itong ballot na nga po, ay kailangan gamitan ng isang pen bago ka makapapindigay ka niyo ang boto. Pwede mo ang ball pen pag boto. Pwede naman. Pwede may discard it. Kasi meron naman kaming pre-cure or not particular. Pero hindi dito ha. 
hindi ito yung gagamitin sa actual election day. Okay, baka, baka maka, kung ma-observe nyo ngayon na medyo nag-blot sa record, dapat hindi. Sa election day, ang gagamitin natin, walang blot sa record. No, kasi baka ma-apektuhan. For this purpose, huwag nyo munang ipasok agad-agad. So, ayun, anyway, mag-share naman kayo dyan kasi para hindi masira ang ating scanner. Okay? So, again, the ballot would need a pen for you to indicate your vote. Without a pen, without the ink, itong ballot na ito, hindi malalaman ni machine kung sino ang inyong binoto. So, it's therefore important that you know in the last part of the discussion of how to see the oval corresponding to the candidates of your choice. Okay? Ang balota, saan binibigay? Doon mismo sa election day. And the ballot should be prepared by the voter himself or herself alone. Nobody else. Except if the voter is a person with disability or a voter is uh, not capable of preparing the ballot by himself. That's an exception to the rule that another person would prepare the ballot and assist the voter to prepare his or her ballot. So as a general rule, dapat siya lang ang mag-prepare ng ballot. Okay? And we observe the secrecy of voting. By the voter, he issued a folder, ballot secrecy folder. No? Uh, hindi siya pwedeng bumoto without using the ballot secrecy folder. Including the one that when we insert the ballot in the division, the ballot of the division, dapat covered pa rin ang ating ballot secrecy folder. Alright. So, again, yung pen na ito, hindi ito magagamitin. Mamaya, pwede kayo gumamit ng ball pen nyo para masumuban nyo lang din kung paano siya uh, mag-recognize ng isang ink, ng isang ink, other than the ink of the spell. Okay, pero during election day, yun na yung kanya. Pinapadala kayo ng ball pen for other purpose. Use your own ball pen for other purpose. May pinapitirma sa inyo sa election day, computerized voters list. No, para hindi kayo magkahawakan sa ibang. Alright. So, ballots, that's the pen that we use in order to shape the oval corresponding to the candidate of your choice. Alright. Let's go to the voting. Last time na ako, natapos ko dito, you proceed. And I know you're excited with the hands-on voting. Alright. Ballot voting will be on a personal person basis, except for the Carotine Express Lane for Personal Disabilities and Senior Citizen in every polling per se. So they will be given another line specifically for them. So, Senior Citizen, Personal Disability, and Heavily Pregnant Women are given Express Lane. No? Now, there is another mode or mode of voting. Or there is another option for the person with disability and senior. You can vote in EAP, Emergency Accessible Polling Place, and the ground floor of every voting center using a multi-story building. Okay, pwede kayong bumoto doon sa baba. Ang tawag dyan, EAP, Emergency Accessible Polling Place, EAPP. Pero, yung EAPP na yan, walang machine. Wala po siyang machine. Ang gagawin lang, i-authorize nyo si support staff para umakit sa taas, kunin yung balota mo, then dyan ka mag-prepare ng balot, then ilalagay sa seal envelope, ibabalik na lang yung support staff, si support si electoral board na si teacher, siya na yung mag-prepeed sa balot before the close of the vote. Pero, that's for your convenience, and that's your choice. So, you have two options. Senior citizen, person with disabilities, and you really pregnant with you. have two options. You go to your precinct in the upper floors or you may opt to go to the ground floor in the emergency accessible polling place. When do you need to decide? Kahit kung na lang yung na kung gusto nyo, doon kayo, uh, kung gusto nyo mag-avail sa EAPP. Okay. And distribute na yung balota. Para makita nyo, doon sa front, meron QR code, tapos meron NPO security, Tingnan niyo yung mga precinct number na sa right side. Katabi ng 
rectangle na space na kung saan kayo naman yung chairman of the electoral board. Sa kaliwa naman, nandun yung pangalan ng bayan at yung paraan ng pagboto na sa kaliwa. Okay? So, nandiyan nakita nyo yung balota and nakita nyo yung uh, candidates for president, vice president, senators, mayor, vice mayor, councilors, governor, vice governor, congressmen, and board members harap sa likod ang party list. Again, di pwede niyo uwi yan ha. Pagkatapos pa natin, magandang usapan niya. Pagkatapos yan, dito na ibabalik na po natin. Okay, just to give you a a refresher of hindi uh, oh, natin ang mabasa ng siyara, no? Inside the polling proceed, you go to the electoral board to get your ballot. Then the electoral board will give you a pen with instruction. You proceed to your voting area, prepare the ballot, then go to the DCM, feed the, the, the ballot, then the receipt will, will come out. Third member, katanggal niyo yung resibo, tapos bibigay sa inyo para masahin nyo, nalagay nyo sa resort, para mabalik kayo sa electoral board, ibibigay yung pen, at uh, nalagyan kayo ng deal bully, then lalabas na kayo. So that's the basic process. Okay. Again, ito lang yung review ng sinabi ko kanina, who are the candidates to be elected in the 2022 election. This is presidential, so kaya tayo may president, may vice president, may 12 senators, 12 senators, then one party list, one governor, one vice governor, and board member, pero in HCR, no governor, no vice governor, no board member, meron tayo dito, one city mayor, one vice mayor, and members of the Sibiria and the Sort or Tambaya in the case of Patreons. Alright. So, paano ang mag-shake? You shake the oval full. So, the entire oval dapat i-shake full. That's the idea. Okay? Again, the voter will be instructed to shake the oval full. Okay? Ngayon, the voter are given a ballot secrecy folder they should cover the ballot when preparing the uh, the ballot. No? So, hindi pwede nilang ipakita sa ibang kanilang boto. Kung mga hindi pwede picturean ng ating mga balota. Okay. The voter may be assisted by this na di po. Ito, halimbawa, this is a blind voter. Uh, he could be assisted by an assistor. The an assistor could be a relative within the court civil degree by a clinical consultability or even not related but living in the same household provision or any member of the electoral board. Okay? So that's the uh, an assistor to be allowed. But this is a reception to the rule that the ballot will be prepared by the voter himself alone. So except in case of persons with disabilities or persons unable to prepare the ballot by themselves. Okay. Ito yung tamang pag-shape. No? Uh, attention please. Kaya ito yung tapang mag-shape. Pag-check lang, mali. X lang, mali. Maglagay lang ng dot sa oval, mali. Maglagay ka ng parang ng logo, mali din. So, the idea is to shape fully the entire oval. To cover the entire oval. Pero ang machine, binabasa na niya kahit 25% uh, lang of the entire oval ang mag-shape. No? Kasi meron tayong 25% threshold. Pero hindi natin yung ina-advise yan. We advise voters to shape fully the oval. Ito po yun, ha? Mali, mali, mali yung ganitong paraan. Dat lang, mali. Kalaan ka pwede, because that's 50% of the entire oval. 25% gagana na siya. And ito yung pinakatama. Alright? So, let's practice it later when you start voting. Okay. Uh, last point. Yung machine will only accept original ballot that are not yet inserted, no? So yung mga previously scanned ballot, nire-reject na niya. Yung mga fake ballots, or mga photocopy ballots, hindi na niya tatanggapin. So this is, that is the security of the assurance na itong machine gagana lang doon sa mga official ballots that were prepared by the voter. Pag Subukan niyo mamaya, pag na-insert na ito, hindi na siya dapat pumasok. Okay, kasi previous list can value na siya. Okay, last one point. Okay, last one point. Ilan ang ipoboto ng President? Sa. Ilan ang mayor? Sa. Okay. 
Uh, ilan ang senators? Twelve. Okay. The, this is the rule. You are only allowed, voters are only allowed to vote uh, in some in that number of candidates to be elected or allowed by law to be elected for a particular position. For instance, ina, mayor is allowed. Uh, Vice Mayor is allowed. Pwede silang hindi kumotos by not shading at all any oval or any candidates for that purpose. So, hindi siya, pwede siyang hindi bumoto. That's allowed. And they will not invalidate the ballot kung hindi siya bumoto for mayor. Second rule, the candidate can also undervote. Where is undervoting? There is undervoting when you vote less than the number of candidates allowed by law to be elected. Dibawa, senators, 12, bumoto ka ng lima. Is it allowed? Yes, under bulky is allowed. So, subukan nyo mamaya. You can be issued more than one ballot. Hindi ka nila yung ballot ang rami kami roadshow ballot. Subukan nyo mag-over vote. Okay, under vote, lima lang ang senator sa binoto nyo. Hindi lang nila yung lima. But it will not affect the rest of your votes. Now, over voting ang dapat ingatan. Dito sa automated election, touch mo. The moment na ito na yung sinig mo, hindi na pwede ni X. Otherwise, mag-overboard ka. Bawa, mayor, nagkakali ka na iba nilagyan mo. At napalo ka yung kalaban mo yun. Pwede rin ganun. O nagkakao na hindi mo na yun. Uh, pwede mo bang i-change ang vote? No more. Kasi that's touch mo. So ano na lang pwede remedyo mo? Eh, mag-overboard ka. Botohan mo dalawa, lalabas ang isibo, hindi bibilang ni machine yung dalawang binoto na. So, what's the effect of overvoting? In other words, what is the effect if you shade in excess of the number of candidates to be elected for position? Halimbawa, ang mayor, bumoto ng dalawa. Vice mayor, bumoto ka ng dalawa. Party list, isa lang dapat, bumoto ka ng dalawa. Senators, bumoto ka ng 13 kasi nakalimutan mo yung paborito mo. Inad mo siya. What is the effect? Pag Overvote, all the candidates there or party na binoto mo ay makusunit straight. Hindi siya bibilangin ni BCM. So, yung 13 votes mo, wala na yun kahit isang senator. Yung mayor mo, dalawa binoto mo, wala na rin ibibilang si machine. But, it will not affect the entire ballots for the votes for other positions. Okay? Ulitin ko, pwede abstain, pwede undervote, Pero, huwag mag-overboat. Kasi pag mag-overboat, hindi mabibigan lahat ng mga kandidatong binoto nyo in excess or for lahat or for that matter in that particular position. Okay? So, tapos na ako from the VCM, from the ballots, then the voting process. Okay? Uh, bawal betrakuhan yung balota. Doon sa actual election day, dapat hindi ninyo pwedeng hindi nyo pwede picture, okay? Tandaan nyo lang yung paglabas ng uh, ng uh, pagpasok yung machine, may lalabas na isang resibo, okay? Yung resibo is the voter receipt na nakalagay kung sino ang mga pangalan ng mga kandidato na binawa tayo. Okay? So, at ibabalik nyo rin yung resibo, hindi nyo pwede ipakita sa ibang tao, itutupin nyo at ilalagay sa isang receptacle for the purpose. Okay, so, importante yung voters receive uh, as a confirmation of the candidates that you have voted on. Okay, so mahal na kayan. This is a one of the innovations in previous elections per demand of the public. So, meron may voter receive. Hindi po pwede i-away yung voter receive. Again, i-even the vote. Question, paano kung hindi, hindi tama yung lumabas ang resibo? Sabi, hindi niya binasa yung gusto ko. Uh, meron proses niya. Ipoprotest mo. Para ipoprotest mo, kikirman mo sa likod. Ipoprotest mo doon sa electoral board. Ire-record yung inyong protest. Hanggang doon lang. Sa so, hindi na pwede kuhanin yung balota. Kasi nandun na sa loob. Uh, let us see. Tingnan niyo during the, the hands-on kung meron mga ganyan instances na iba yung binoto niyo at iba yung lumabas. Pero tandaan niyo dito, iba yung mga pangalan dyan. I-lista niyo. Kasi baka naman kayo ang mali. Sa totoo lang, during voting, kayo lang nakakaalam kung sino binoto nyo. Pwede mong sabihin sa picture, 
Ito yung pinoto ko eh. Ba't ito lumabas? Sa so, totoo lang, sabihin ni teacher, ikaw lang nakakalam yan. Maring nagkamali ka rin. Pero, yun na yun. So, pwede ka mag-protest sa teacher na ito, kandidato na ito. Hindi ito pinoto ko pero lumabas dito. Pwede mo kayo sa ito, binigay mo sa kanya yung resibo. Hindi ito yung papasok sa reset kapal kung mayroong protest ang isang uh, voter receipt. Okay? Pagkatapos magkuha na yung voter receipt, may balik na, nilalagyan na kayo ng intelligible ink. Or, tatandaan nyo yung, ito yung voter receipt, then ito po yung resibo, papakita sa inyo, pero hindi nyo pwede ipakita sa iba. Then, pagkatapos, nilalagyan na kayo, nilalagyan sa reset kapal, nilalagyan na kayo ng intelligible ink. Okay? Gaya yung nasabi ko kanina, there is an express way for personal disabilities, senior citizen, and uh, having a pregnant women in every polling receipt. Or, they can go in emergency accessible polling place located on the ground floor of the voting center. No? Kaya lang siya pwede mag-apply or mag-decide. Doon din siya po sa halalan. Ayaw ko kumakit sa third floor. Gusto ko dito na na. Pwede ba yun? Yes. Pupunta ka lang sa EAEP, mayroong staff doon, bibigyan ka ng authorization, ikaw ang maglalagay, inautorize ko siya, nagpunta, kuha niyo yung balota ko, dyan na ako magpilat ng balota, pero siya na ang maglalagay, mong elektoran mo na ang magpil sa, sa machine ng inyong balota, pero nakalagay sa isang seal, envelope, envelope. Kaya lang bibigay ito, bago mag-close ang voting. So, option po na mga CEO dyan, at mga kalamang, magbibiyas, para pwede kayong bumoto sa taas or the world. Pag nandun kayong bumoto sa inyong presinto, ay first number talagang uh, priority kayo. Pero dito sa uh, EAPP, mas lalo priority kayo at komportable kasi nasa ground floor yun. Hindi na kayo makakakyan. Okay? So, I have covered BCM, Bottles, and the Manner of Okay, so that's it for this part, and we go to the report to the second part, which is the actual hands-on. Meron tayo mag-assist dito, ibigay ng balota, ibigyan tayo ng machine, then the polling line, again, huwag yung i-uwi yung balota. Tsaka huwag yung i-uwi yung mga resibo, kasi ito sabi ko nga, ito may complex logo ito eh. Huwag niyo yung gawing souvenir, kasi nakatakot namin ang souvenir ito kung nakita ng mga kandidato niya. Pati yung pen, hindi yun eh. Huwag nyo rin yung uwi ito ha, kasi wala. Ito naman ay walang sulat, pero huwag nyo rin yung uwi. Nagagamitin pa namin sa mga produksyo eh. Ibalik nyo na lang kasi nagagamitin pa namin, marami pa kami produksyo para marami mga tao na malaman ang pag-voto rin. Again, marami sa lahat sa inyong presensya at I hope you have learned or you were refreshed about the battle of the PCM and the voting process using the vote-counting machine in an alternative election. Thank you very much and good afternoon.